headline is U.S. is going to send F-35s, F-16s to the Gulf. Apparently, Iran has been attempting to seize oil tankers, successfully seized mm -hmm. a couple, or at least one. And um, they're going to send F-16s, F-35s, and a destroyer to supplement the F-16s and A-10s that are already there. And yep. apparently, um, we're discouraging Iran didn't, from continuing this activity. Didn't yeah. we play this game already before? I was going to say, so I, <laughs> so I grew up in this region, you know, in Saudi Arabia, Persian Gulf, and it's always been from the 70s. I'm that old, but um, it's always been kind of a, uh, an, a, a region of, of conflict. And kind of like Casmo is saying, we think we've heard this before. So I, you could get pretty political and whatnot with this article. I just, I have a little bit of experience as far as like militarily what happened. So back in two, 2007, they actually took, uh, I think it's 15 British sailors as hostages. So the Iranians came out, there was a dispute on, Hey, these are our waters. No, they're not. The uh, Brits lost. So they uh, took them captive. And as a response, uh, as part of the U S response, they sent uh, two carriers into the uh, Gulf. And I was part of that as John C. Stennis he was in Nimitz was the other one, but you know, and of course, you know, we're flying cap and you know, <laughs> tensions were high, but as somebody who was there <laughs> and the fact that they actually took hostages, you know, the, the media will always, will always hype it up because they want you to watch, but like taking off, it was weapons, uh, what was it white and tight, which is basically, no chance to arm up unless you know you're being uh, attacked or uh, you know some you know you you or a coalition aircraft or whatever is being attacked. And so I just I just remember being up there flying cap and an F-18 just you know right up against the border of Iran, hot and cold, hot and cold. And uh, they they had their F-4s. I could see them on radar. I couldn't see them visually, but I just remember thinking I've got a winder <laughs> and the gun. I know he's probably got like a sparrow. <laughs> I'm like, when this, I'm going to be casualty one via sparrow off an F4, and I'm not going to be happy about it. <laughs> so that's, that's actually what I was thinking the whole time because that was a loadout that they sent us up uh, up for. So I'm not going to speculate on like what the weapons posture is, but I think it's nothing more than a show of force, which Casmo knows we do shows of force in various sizes and capacities. There could be some troops on the ground that need uh, something loud and fast to go over, and they'll call a well, an A10 is not fast, but an F16 or an F18 to zoom by and scare some people. And I, you know, reading this article and having listened to uh, the media talk about it, I think all it is is basically just that, just a show of force, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. And I think actually Iran's probably saying playing the same game i will say that uh some of the best intercepts that i ever did were uh, was during that whole conflict because they would every day send a maritime patrol airplane out to the uh carrier i mean straight for it and of course we would intercept it and it was it was it was pretty fun because we had the faster airplane but you know other than that it was just it was all show did um, they have the exit anti-ship missile i'm sure they did <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure yeah Casimo, do you have any experience, uh, you know, dealing with that, the Iranians as far as show of force as an army guy? No, I mean, my joke really is to like, you know, the late 80s and stuff. And um, when I, I was flying OH-58s in the army and that was kind of the birth of the armed OH-58 Delta was out there flying off of these converted oil rigs right. and, uh, you know, trying to intercept these Iranian gunboats that were going to to interdict these these ships. So. Um, I think around 2020, like right before COVID, you know, when things started heating up and we had the Al-Assad missile strike from Iran and all that stuff was going on. Um, I think they were doing that again. There was, uh, Apaches that were flying off of, uh, Navy ships. And I, th I think even, wow. I think the Navy's got some sort of like movable platform thing that can just plop in the water and it becomes like a helicopter base. Um, so they were flying off of, off of stuff like that too. So yeah, right. it's, I mean, nothing, you know, it's all nothing new. I think you're right, though, with the Jets. You know, it's easy to to move them somewhere, right? I mean, they can, most of them just self-deploy. So it's an easy button to just throw stuff over there because a carrier is going to take forever and, you know, Army stuff's going to take forever. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's if, 
you, you know, you read about, it's always about a border dispute, right? Hey, we're in international waters. No, you're not. And the, uh, yeah. the, the crazy thing was like the Navy recognized Farsi Island as like a no fly zone, but the air force didn't. So I, I, got, I got in trouble once cause I got really close to flying over Farsi Island. And you know, the whole time I'm like, well, like we can't even, we can't even agree on right. on the airspace or <laughs> sea space out here. You know, this is kind of, it's kind of ridiculous, but um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of a mess over there. And it's sad because at, at the end of the day, you know, just there's a bunch of innocent people out there just trying to make a living that suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Theater yeah security it's a tight area. So I can see, I can see the border just always being an issue because that whole area is just so tight and crammed in and there's just so many competing, you know, things. Oh, going yeah. On. All the sea space, it was uh, with two carrier ops in there. It was basically a deconfliction drill. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, All right. Yeah, mover any experience over there and uh, <laughs> with the uh, Iranian we were, situation? I mean, yeah, I mean, well, you know, in our, Iraq, we were always on the border and they were always pinging us with whatever surface-to-air missile threats that they had in the region. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we also had guys fly into uh, some airspaces that they weren't supposed to and end up getting grounded because that's a common thing where you get turned around in the cast wheel and end up where you're not supposed to be. Uh, so, but in, in general, you know, it's, it's always going to be, uh, you know, a, a contested area, especially as you start talking about their nuke program and, and yep. all the, all the different geopolitical uh, aspirations that they have. I will say though, you know, you and I were talking about this a little bit. The government is kind of is what it is, but the people are a lot different and the people are good people. You know, it's not yeah. the government or it's not the people, it's the government. And, yeah. you know, they want freedom and they want to break away in some cases away from, from what this, what this is. But unfortunately it just hasn't happened yet. Well, it's funny you say that. I right. the, the captain I just flew with uh, the other day, he's Iranian, um, and yeah. so you know we got we took off and we we're and we were talking, and he he was like, oh, you know, what's your background? I told him I was in the army, and and I was like, well, where are you from? Because I could tell he's not, you know, he's not a local. <laughs> you and, ain't um, from around here, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where are you from? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm from Iran, and same thing. But I mean, that was the thing. He's like, he's like, hey. The Iranian people, like we love you, dudes. It's the government, and he had some very choice words and some things to talk about the yeah. government. But you're you're 100 right. I mean, and that's generally true across the board, right? It's it's always just these governments just fighting over yeah. stuff, and you know, and ugh, it's rough. Yeah, Casmo, did you ever did you ever run an intercept in the helicopter against uh, PT boats and stuff? No, Probably, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't really in our, awesome. our stuff. We, we run intercepts on dudes, you know, walking. Um, <laughs> I think the most high adventure of that that we had was uh, I was in Iraq in 2006. And, you know, this was like drones were still kind of early on and stuff. You know, you had them, but it wasn't nearly the way it is now. And people kept talking about seeing something out there. And so sure enough, it turned out that it was it, it looked like it was an Iranian drone that was being sent over and looking at stuff. And so we were given the clearance to like, hey, if you ever come across this thing, you're clear to engage. <laughs> so a bunch of helicopter guys were like, oh, how are we going to do this? You know, so the conversation yeah. was always, you know, we we're talking about like with flechette rockets, you know, they burst over like, yeah, that's probably the best. <laughs> bet. Just shoot a flechette. At it. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so unfortunately, never, never got to do it. Dude, that's that's the closest I ever got to an air to air kill was a Iranian drone. We got to, we were oh, really? sitting because we had alert postures, right? You had the air to air alert and the air to ground alert. And I was in air to air alert and they're like, Hey, you know, klaxons going off, we're going. And they canceled us right as we were taxiing out because they gave it to some dudes that were already airborne and they strafed the thing and they got the kill. And I'm like, come on, really? Probably some it's my guys, only man. job. It's my Probably only some... job. No, it was Viper dudes. They <laughs> strafed it? it. Like it, they oh. didn't like, it, you know, they were like, well, I don't know how to deal with this. You know, so does that count? High angle strafe. Does that count as a kill? Like if you get five drones, are you an ace? Like, how does that work? Does a balloon <laughs> count? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does a children's Mylar balloon count less than a Chinese spy <laughs> balloon? I, I don't know. I mean, Apparently if so, I've got at kill. least one. Well, I've got a flare kill. Gonky, you, you video. Oh, yeah. You I were there when kill. I got my flare I was kill. There. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so right. I mean, <laughs> I've shot an air-to-air -air missile at things in the air. 
Ooh. Yeah. You know? That counts. I wasn't angry. I mean, I was a little <laughs> angry because of, you know, just being Asma, there, I, but... I totally, I totally count it. Why not? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's in oh, the yeah. air. It's bad. Yeah. It was turning. All right. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> it was under its own power. Like the balloon, you, you, you can't miss. Someone was there. Someone was there. If they were in a control, in a bunker, or if they were in the thing... Well, can you yeah, imagine the terror? Like you're just you're just pucking along with your mouse, and then suddenly you know your screen explodes. That's a Dos Gringo song. You say, "Oh, what the hell?" and go get another cup of coffee. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> it's just like DCS, dude. You're just like, "Ah, oh, son of a." Same thing. Well, let me <laughs> new jet, new day. That's right.